Well, we're back painting this piece with the Big Sur coast in the background and a Tuscan courtyard in the foreground. I'm going to be working on the floor in this session, on the tile floor, and I just wanted to point out my color mixtures. So first of all, these colors along the back, and I've actually used up a couple of them. Let me put these out. This is uh, so I can show you our, the basic colors in our primary, double primary color mixing system. Putting out alizarin crimson, and this will be ultramarine blue. I use Winton uh, oil paints, and these are put out by Windsor Newton. Let me get the top on this. But this is Winton oil paint. It's a, a very excellent, let's see, make sure I'm in the frame. Here we go. Okay. Uh, that's Winton oil colors, oil paints. And this is a very economical paint. It, they consider it a student grade paint, but it's a very good quality. Uh, I've used it for years, never had a problem with it. The colors are vibrant. Uh, Jack used them on $60,000 portraits, so they are an excellent, excellent paint to use. Um, so don't spend your money on a lot of exotic brands and whatever. This works beautifully. So my do our double primary color mixing system, this is soft mixing white. This is cadmium lemon yellow, cadmium yellow medium. This is cadmium red light, and I mix these two to get my cadmium orange. I use one part of the cadmium red light and two parts of the cadmium yellow medium, and that makes my cadmium orange. This is alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and then this is my mud, which is a mixture of the ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson. I use two parts of the ultramarine blue and one part of the alizarin crimson. And this is the mud is the basis for most of these uh, burnt sienna colors that you see here. This is my mixture of mud with a little bit of a liquid original mixed in. That gives me a thin wash, thin oil wash. And that I will use for drawing the perspective lines in the tile floor. These colors over here are colors that I've mixed. The greens are basically, the this bright green is phthalo blue plus cadmium yellow. Uh, this more muted green is ultramarine blue plus a little bit of the lemon yellow, but that makes a more uh, muted, warmer green. My colors out here, these all are basically mixtures of my mud plus cadmium orange plus white. Uh, this mixture has a little more alizarin crimson mixed into it. These are just the mud plus cadmium orange plus white. This is white plus ultramarine blue. These two are actually some of the mixes left over from my flowers. This is phthalo blue plus cadmium orange plus white, and this is the same thing with more white in it. So that just gives you, shows you the colors uh, that I've mixed that I'm going to use on the floor. So let's get to work painting. All right, we're going to begin blocking in the floor. And I start with my mixture of the ultramarine blue plus white. This is, this makes a cool blue that I put in the background. This makes the floor recede, it appears to recede. In painting, realistic or semi-realistic, impressionistic realism, anything that's quote representational, we're working to give the feeling of three dimensions on a two-dimensional canvas. So using cool colors as you go back and warmer colors as you come forward helps to give the uh, feeling of depth in the painting. We're working on a flat surface, surface and we want it to appear three-dimensional. So that is one way of doing that. Also, another way to do that is uh, with the edges of your elements. Softer edges go back, sharper, harder edges come forward. Um, if you can look at the picture of the full painting that I showed you at the very beginning of this, you'll notice in the ocean 
uh, portion of the canvas that if you look at the ocean, all the mountains going back are, and bluffs are, they get, the edges get softer as they go back. Now I'm beginning to work in some of the muted gray greens and uh, some of the rusty colors into the, into my floor. Under here, under the wall where it comes down, that'll get a little darker. Just the building, the shadow and reflection of the darker arch down in. And I bring a little of my blue here to just give the feeling of a reflection of the sky. Now the sun's coming in from the left. Or, uh, excuse me. The sun is coming in from the right. So it pours in behind this planter and it then hits on the door and all. So then the sun, I let start coming in here and it comes behind those Gerber daisies and the sweet potato vine that will be cascading out of that planter. So we let that come across. I also add a little of this bluer mixture at the base of this wall here to let it go in behind this container. And you can see even on this large brush, it's called a bright brush, it has a square end, but I can use the corner of it to work that finer line in. Just again, I can just bring that. And I go back again, I'm just blocking this in right now. But I want my color to come and as I this bright light gets closer to us, it gets a little bit lighter. This again is my mud, which is two parts ultramarine blue plus one part of alizarin crimson. And I've added cadmium orange into that and then white. And this light will end up hitting on the sunflowers over here. A little bit, it's a little bit darker right there. The flowers the, from this pot, we get a little bit of a shadow coming right here, hitting on these steps. And again, I'll bring some of that muted gray, green in here. These are old tiles, so they get kind of mossy and old. and Just that also adds variation into the color which add, makes this surface interesting. Even in your big, large areas, you want to have interest. Big blocks of color like this. And then as we come here, the shadow coming across. This is again cast by this wall and this planter. This rock planter in here. Again, there's going to be vine coming out of there. But I make the back edge of this shadow cooler so that, again, that pulls it back. And I, I'm just blocking this in. But I would like to add a lot of different color in there, texture. These old tiles are uneven and this just adds character in my in this large area. And I'll paint, I'll bring some of those leaves down over later. I just want to get the floor in and then I can bring some of that overlapping color down. This floor goes underneath the leaves and of the sunflowers. And they even make a few little shadows in here. But you can see how I can use the corner of that brush to work around some of the leaves. And then I'll use some of that blue just bring a little coolness in under that, under the 
foliage there. I also, the, one of the secrets to clean color on your canvas is a clean brush. So I frequently wipe out my brush. I use some of the mixture with a little more orange warmth in the very front of my shadow. And I use some of that gray green again and the blues toward the back of that shadow. I like to add a shadow across the front of the painting. That again is another method of giving the feeling of depth in a painting. This is kind of called, the, this. in fact Jack always called this the threshold effect. If you think of standing outside your home on a warm summer evening, uh, it's dark out and your lights are on in the front door, front door is open, and you look across the darkness and your eye is pulled to that open door with the light shining. And that dark is called the threshold. It's like you're stepping across the opening of the door into the lit room. And this helps to draw your eye into the painting. You have the dark in the foreground and then your eye is drawn to the light. And this again is another way to give the feeling of depth in the painting. It's like having the darker arch in the foreground. You can't see it right here, but then your eye is drawn to the light in the distance. So this is my initial block in of the floor. I get this totally covered. I want to establish the light and the dark pattern. Let's a little bit of that across. And it's hitting here. It's hitting on these sunflowers. I'm going to bring with a smaller brush, I'm just going to bring another little shot of light, and I want it to follow the same angle as my light on the ocean. Just a little shot of light in here. It's like just the plants giving a filtered light coming through. And just a little shot there. Then with a clean brush, wash it out real good, wipe it, then I would just drag this across these strokes to soften them just a little bit. I don't make it real heavy, I just kind of float the brush across the surface. But this just softens that edge just a little bit. And I do the same in the back this direction here. So there we go. Our floor is ready to start pulling the lines in it. Well, I will show that in another portion of this video in another step. So I hope you'll come follow along. Please visit uh, my blog. The link is in the description below. I show the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting as well as others I do. And you can Subscribe to that and you'll get an email every time that I post a blog. So again, the link is in the description below. And come watch how I pull the lines in the floor. You have a great day and happy painting.